Hey, welcome back. And in this session, I'm gonna show you how to make slideshows or sliding content. On my screen, you can already see that I have um, a scene set up where I have three different slides. Uh, the sketch mockup looked like this, but you know, the content has to slide from one side to the other, one, one slide at a time. And this is exactly what we're gonna try to replicate. I would advise to first of all, set up how many slides you're gonna have. You don't have to have a content it, you know done and dusted it just has to be at least you know the actual kind of placeholder elements and as you can see I have three slides with just text different this is a static image down below again i could either add actions to it as i go through or i can you know make element by element bit by bit and bring it to life i would start by making like a dynamic panel out of this because dynamic panels are basically our bread and butter in you know prototyping world so i would convert one of the slides to that i would probably expand it to a full width or the width it has to take so that let's say when it slides in it doesn't just slide in where our dynamic panel began but from actual edge of a screen. And I would just probably cut every single slide and just make different states like that. But let's say in state two, I would just make the slide in like this, just to align it. And let's say another state, let me click through, cut that content and in the third state, Add that third item, just like that, and just align it as well, so it fits pretty well. And not pixel perfect, but that's okay. The minimal approach to this to make it sliding content is by simply we can say if we select that dynamic panel, uh, let's say on swipe left, set next state or previous state. Um, you know, the tool already suggests what to do. So we can say this widget, because I, again, I forgot to give it a name, which is a good practice to do. And let's say this is slideshow one. And we're saying that slideshow one on swipe left, set panel state, uh, let's say previous state, and wrap from first to last, which is basically when it's gonna be in a loop. It's not gonna stop at the last one. And we can also set animation options for that slide left or would it be slide right okay let's do slide left and see what happens we can you know select animation options as well and let's test it out as you can see it already works and it's continuous it's never ending as you can see it doesn't go back because we didn't add that action but let's do that so let's say if I add new interaction on swipe right Scroll down here. I can just literally copy that function and just edit inverting the directions. So let's say slide right, next, and wrapping it. So it's the same behavior but just inverted for two different actions, two different directions. And we have our slideshow ready. With some minor tweaks we can make it even more like let's say the linear approach or like some bounce to it. If a bounce is probably most prominent, it's gonna have some, as you can see, it's bouncing. But since it, our animation is quite slow, it's really jagged. So you, you, would, you wouldn't want to do that uh, usually. Perhaps slow it down or play with other options. I usually just go with linear so it doesn't confuse the users because it's quite smooth and easy to understand. As you can see, one thing to note, as I expanded the dynamic panel, it now starts from the right edge of the screen. However, it cuts a little bit short on the right. The fix to that would be just going to the dynamic panels and just expanding it a little bit, but shuffling the actual content slightly to the right. So you have same effect just like this but you have some space and then it should look much better if we would preview as you can see it went through the edge so it looks much more complete as a product 
how would you do a slideshows if you would have a web interface or web app? You know, sometimes you might want controls or like buttons in, in like let's say at the bottom, which states, hey, you are on Vista. As you can see, I have, let's say three slides, so three buttons. Um, if you remember from tabbing video, check that if you don't, it's quite easy to do. So let's say I can just give it a color and we have, let's say first slide active. Now I would want to convert that into a dynamic panel, with right click, because it has to change as well as the main slideshow. Let's call this area uh, bullets. Now for bullets, again, you want to set the scene, so you want to make different states. I just duplicate those. Let's say for state two, we want the second bullet to be colored, not the first one is easy to do so we go into style we select that color we deselect the other one it's kind of manual animation frame by frame and the third one it's even easier sometimes from my experience I tend like uh, it could be that you have seven bullets and when you go step by step and it's necessity it just makes you feel good in the end because you know you've done how I would approach animating those bullets as we swipe is just assigning it to the same interactions because you already have that action of swiping. So now you need to attach it to the different dynamic panel because you can add another target and say bullets. Now for bullets, we need to have exactly the same behavior as the other one. And a good note is that in a previous dynamic panel, we selected previous wrap and we, exactly what we want to select here as well. And as simple as that, we don't need to animate bullets unless you really want to, it's up to you. i play with it. And I'm just gonna copy that strip if I can. No, I can't, I need to add it manually. But it's simple as just adding next and wrapping it. Now let's test it out. As you can see, it does switch. What if you would want to add more controls? So for example, maybe you want to add arrows if it's a web interface and it's quite common, you know, that you want to do by click rather than swipe. It's quite easy to do. We drag in an icon. Let's say this is our arrow to go right. And let's get another, I'm just doing it quick and dirty. But imagine that you have some sort of slideshow, like a banner header, which just swipes away. You can automate it if you want to, it's, you know, it's easy to do. What would I do immediately is to try to reuse as much of a logic as possible. Meaning the swiping things, I could just copy that and assign it to one of these. So let's say on click, what I would want to do, I can, oh, if you see that, that was pretty neat. I could just say paste and it's pasted, it. but now you see it gives an error saying that nothing got selected. So I just need to select both slideshow, do the previous one and wrap. And then you can, you know, do the same animation as per before, let's say left. And now if I would do that with the arrow, it would just animate. As you can see, it does the trick. You don't need to, you can swipe or you can just use the arrow. Same with the uh, right arrow, you can just copy paste that into another object and then it's gonna do a trick. If you wanna make it with power states, you can, you know, convert the arrow into dynamic panel with two states and just say flip it on a mouse over, which is completely easy. If you don't know how to refer to a previous video about buttons and call to action elements, it's pretty good uh, intro of how to do so. So these are the fundamentals of uh, making a slideshow happen. Uh, you can always add more complexity if you know if, how to combine different elements. As usual, if this is too basic for you, uh, skip ahead, skip a couple of videos ahead. I'm trying to release them as I go. And I'm gonna try to cover it progressively so that the intensity and the complexity increases as we go forward. If you have any questions or any other ways to solve this, leave a comment below, give it a like, subscribe to his channel, and see you next time.